You guys didn't really think that I was gonna be sitting on my butt on a couch all weekend, did you? Well guys, this is Long Haul Larry and Big Blue. Big Blue's going in for a little bit of tender care. This is the plan all along. I was just messing with you guys. I wasn't gonna be sitting around on my butt all a couple days off here, come on. Before I let you guys go, I wonder what the big horn sounds like inside the shop. <laughs> well, hey guys, we are in my shop and I'm going to be doing some work on Big Bloop. I'll get into that in just a minute. Walk you through what I'm going to do there. Um, first of all, one of the things that's been bothering me on Big Blue is the door. Uh, the door. There's like this little catch thing that keeps the door from closing. And when you push the old door open, it, it holds the door open. Because a lot of times the uh, lumpers or the receivers or someone come out to the truck and you put, open up the door and it sits there and they come walking in there and then the wind <laughs> blows it and it hits them in the head. Um, it broke like, I don't know, maybe a month or so into doing this. One of the, bro the screws broke. And the other one was sitting there hanging on barely and... I ended up, I took the screw out because I was afraid it was going to snap the arm. So I just took the screw out and pushed the whole mechanism inside the door. And I figured I'd fix it. Well, I can't get in behind there. I tried, there's a kick plate on the side of the door where I thought I can get back behind there and put a bolt through there with a nut and everything. You can't get back behind there. It's in the frame. So <clears throat> that's fine. Um, I have a, I've done it before when I worked on the Mac cab overs. We would use nut setting. Uh, these uh, nut setters. It's almost like a rivet gun, except it, it seats a thread. And I had the tool, and I have searched around in here. I can't find it. And so I decided to order a new one, and I thought I'd show you that and walk through what is going on there. But um, first, also, I just picked up my new boots. I know you guys are you guys get in, uh, interested in this kind of stuff. I'll show you these things. Ooh. Look at these. That's some fancy boots right there. You're gonna be a real truck driver. <laughs> they are work boots and everything. I'm just tired of the shoelaces and stuff, so I decided to go to this style. Um, really nice boot. They're uh, from Red Wing Shoes, and they're the Irish Setter brand. Really soft leather. And um, they had to special order them because I got some wide, funky feet. <laughs> so they had to special order those. So those are pretty cool. Those are my new boots. I uh, probably won't wear them today because I'm going to be all greasy and stuff in a little bit underneath this truck. But let's open this thing up. This is from a company called Astro Pneumatic Tool Company. It's not a pneumatic tool though. And it is a uh, 13 nut thread setting hand riveting kit. Um, it has metric end say, uh, threads in here so that you can put in metric end the regular. So let's check it out. It says made in China. I got this from Amazon. Ooh, look at that. You can, I can smell it already. Yep. Smells like communism. 
Uh, let's see. Important notice. Okay. Glad to hear that. There's a warranty. Sure. I'm going to get warrantied from China. Uh, here's the instructions. I've never used this one. I've always used a hand grip one, almost like a rivet gun. And I decided to get this bigger one because this one here had multiple ones you could do. Metric and and it also did some pretty big sizes too. The 5 sixteenths, the quarter 20, um, 10 24, M6, M8, and M5. So basically what it is, is just a basically an overgrown rivet gun. Ooh, there's that smell. <laughs> it's just basically like a big overgrown rivet gun. And what you do, we're going to put in a metric one on here. I don't know why I was at the store and... For some reason, I thought I needed metric for this or something, so I bought an M6 bolt. <laughs> so we'll put metric in there. It's fine. But basically what it is, if you can see it here, it's it's just kind of this little round thing. It has a lip on here. It has some grooves in here that's supposed to catch the metal. And all you do is you just drill out a hole. If you can't get behind something to put a nut on there, you just drill out the hole. And this one here, it has a little chart on here. It tells me an M6 is a 3 h drill bit. So you drill a 3-8 drill bit, and then you'll screw, it has different different little bits on here, and you'll put one of those on, and you'll screw it onto there, and then you'll push it into the hole, and it'll be like so, and then when you push this together like that, it sucks it in like a rivet, and it squishes it inside that metal, and it gives you threads on the inside, so that you can thread a bolt in there, and you don't have to hold a nut on the backside. It's pretty cool. Um, I want to say this one was like $60, somewhere right in there. I'll try to put a link on the bottom of the video. I actually ordered this one a little while ago. So, I actually do not know how to put this one together. Um, <clears throat> I think I'll save you guys the, the reading of it. Alright guys, I'll show you how to set this up. I'm going to save you guys kind of the instruction reading and everything else. Um... But it will do M4, M5, M6, M8, 10, 24, 1 quarter by 20, and 15, 16 by 18. Those are the ones that it does. <clears throat> Basically, right now, this one has the M8 in it. So to remove it, we just take this top nut off. And then all we do is we just put our finger in here. We just slide this little sleeve down. <clears throat> So like that, and then this manual, manual, can't talk, just threads out, just like so. And this is the M8 one, so we'll put that one in there, because you want to make sure you keep these together. Alright, here is the M6 one. And all you do is just thread her down in there. And you just put your finger down in there and you can kind of pull down in the sleeve. And you don't need to torque it or nothing like that. Tighten this up a little bit so I can get more of it. I can see more. You don't need to torque it or nothing. It just needs to be hand tightened. And then you just turn that back and forth until that little sleeve pops up. Then you take this here nut. And you just thread it up on there. You kind of turn this so that you get all the threads on there. And that's how you adjust how tight it will set it. <clears throat> then what you do is you just thread your little nut set. Put it on there just like that. Now you stick it in a hole just like a rivet gun. And when you pull this back, it's going to pull that pin back in there. And it's going to squish it inside the hole. So I'm going to quick do that <clears throat> before my heater kicks back on because it's a little chilly. I think it's like 20 degrees here so we're gonna I'll do a quick hole we'll put we'll put it in there and we'll set one of them so it's asking for a 3 8 hole <clears throat> and I'm gonna use my new headlamp that I just bought this little Nebo one I'm gonna use this one Really no reason, just 
grabbed it. One. Well, here we are, guys, and we're going to install this real quick. I'm just going to show this to you real quick, and then we'll do a walk around truck. I'm going to show you all the other things we're going to do. But I have a 2x6 here propped in there. But what happens now, see, there's an arm that's in here, and this pulls out. And see, there's two bolts that go in here, but this one broke off, and this one was all boogered up. So I just pulled it out of there. But what happens is, because there's nothing holding this door, so when I put, open the door, it just, it just closes by itself. You'll see. I'll just let go of it. And see, it just always does that. So when somebody comes to my door, i got to sit there and hold the door open. So we're going to fix this real quick. I'm going to try this tool out. Been wanting to do this for a while. So first thing we do is we just got to drill out the hole. There we go. <clears throat> Basically, it's just a big giant rivet gun. So we're just gonna put it in there and squeeze it. Just like that, seems pretty tight. Seems like she held good. So then you just take this knob You just turn it counterclockwise. And right there you have a you have a nut. You now have threads in a hole that you can't get to. I've tried pulling off this plastic panel. You can't get behind there. There's a there's a nut that's welded on the back side of there. And this one has a broken off bolt in it. That'd be fun drilling out. But this one here, the whole nut just came right off because it was loose and flopping around. So you can't get behind there to put a new nut on there or anything like that. So this is basically the only way you're gonna do it. So I'll go get a, a bolt quick and we'll just put that one in there just to show you how it goes. <clears throat> All right, now we just pull this back out. It's gonna be hard, I guess reason why is because it's got a spring on it. There we go. <clears throat> and then I just have this one here. I just put a washer on it and this. Now I am going to drill the top one on and put, it, uh, put one in the top before I go anywhere. But I'm just showing you guys. Try to get it lined up straight so I don't strip. There we go. So now we just thread our bolt in there. There you go. See now in it. See it's I need a top one in there. But see now the door stays open. See, it stays there. I don't have to do it. That's what that little keeper is. Now i got to put one in the top. I'm going to show you guys another little trick. Maybe people out there, you're looking for uh, maybe a Christmas gift for a dad or a guy who's working out in a shop and everything. And I have bought tools all my life. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, screwdriver sets are always good. You always want to buy a screwdriver set that has a carbide tip on it, that has a nice hardened tip. So that it doesn't, you know, fold over or nothing like that. But the really nice thing you want to look for screwdriver kits is you want to have, be able to have this nut on here. And the reason why you want to have that nut on there is because if you get one that's really hard to get off, you can put a wrench on there and it adds you leverage. And so then you can give it a little bit extra. Or if you have to take it apart, a little bit extra to take it apart. So a little, little something for you guys if you guys are looking for gifts for that guy out there that wants some tools or something. You're thinking maybe a screwdriver set. Look for one with the hardened tip, and look for one with the with the nut on there. You always want those on there because sometimes you just can't get them, and then you're sitting there putting vice grips, clamping vice grips on the handles and stuff like that, trying to get it. You got that nut on there, it makes it so much better. Well, let's look around the truck. I'll do the other one in a little bit, um, but let's look around the truck, and I'll show you what I'm going to do here today. All right, guys, um, here's what we're going to be doing to Big Blue. Uh, this is a major thing. I got a lot of little things I want to do, too, but I don't think I'm going to have the time. 
I'm not on vacation. I'm home to get this done. Um, the rear main is leaking, and it's getting worse and worse, so we need to tackle this. We need to get this done so that it doesn't go on me someplace out on the highway and I lose all my oil, maybe hurt the engine, or, you know, can't go anywhere and have to get towed to a shop and sit in there forever while somebody does this, what I'm going to do in one night. So, what we're going to do is we're going to change the rear main in this truck, which is this. This is a rear main. It's a big seal. And where that goes is in between the engine block and the transmission. So what I have to do is I have to remove the drive shaft, pull that out of the way. I got to go up underneath there, unbolt the transmission, pull the transmission out. I got to pull the clutch assembly off. I got to pull the flywheel off. Then I'm going to get to where the bell housing is. And I, we had this inspected at a Cummings dealer when they worked on the motor and they found a leak and I did not know this until the boss sent me the report from the Cummings place. It's also leaking behind the bell house. So I have to jack the motor up and I got to pull the bell house off. The bell house is hooked onto the back of the block and that is where the engine mounts are. So I have to jack the motor in the air to support it and then take the engine mounts off, take the bell housing out, clean it all up, put a new gasket in it, put it back together. And then when I put it back together, then this seal here goes around the crankshaft where it comes out into the bell housing. And this is the seal that will be, have to be pressed on there. So that is the job that is entailed here. Um, it is the main job. If I can get this done, I'm going to tackle a bunch of other little things. Um, first of all, I got to get this thing jacked up. I need to be able to get up underneath this truck easily without having to you know, crawl on my belly all back and forth so many times. So I'm actually going to pull these steps right here off. And it's just four bolts and the steps that come right off. I'm going to pull the bolts off, pull those steps out of the way. That gives me easy access to get underneath there. And I have to be able to get my transmission jack over there. I have to be able to get it in there. So that's going to be a good place to roll it up underneath there. Um, I do have the front end jacked up. And I'm going to jack up the back end pretty high. Try to get, a, you know, another half a foot up in the air that'll give me some room to be up underneath there and put it up on jack stands um <clears throat> the front here these are just um these are ramps that i built they're actually uh two inch thick boards 12 inches wide and i don't know probably what three feet long something like that and there's two of them, and they're nailed together, so it makes it four inches. These are actual two-inch boards. These are old barn boards that we had laying around here. So they are actually two inches thick, so it gets the truck up four inches. What that does is lets me get buckets up underneath the bumpers of the truck so I can drain the oil in them. Because we have to drain the oil out of here because I have to take the oil pan off of this truck. So, a lot of things to get done tonight. Um, the boss had an estimate of doing this job. And I think it was $3,500. Um, I've done many rear mains before. I've done them in Mack trucks. I've done them in Freightliners. I've never done a Kenworth. Um, but then he was telling me all kinds of weird things about oil pan gaskets I need. And all this. I'm like, why would I need that to do a rear seal? That makes no sense. But then I read the report from the Cummings place. It's actually leaking around where the block meets the bell housing. So that means the bell housing got to come off. So when that happens... The bell housing is what supports the motor. <clears throat> so I got to jack the motor up to hold it while well, I pull the bell housing off. And you can't jack up on a oil pan. You'll just it'll it's too thin a metal. You'll dent it. So I have to take the oil pan off and then block up on the sides of the block of the engine itself. So that's what's all going on. It made sense when I read the report and what needs to be done here. So um, we are going to get going on this and try to knock this out and get this thing going so Big Blue stops spilling oil. Because uh, over the last like week and a half or so, I've been noticing oil drips. When I stop and park for a few minutes or something, I leave, I'll see a couple drips. So, And I've been going through, I don't know, maybe about a gallon every couple weeks or so. And, and it never used oil, so I know it's going out there. Nope, cats are out there howling. <laughs> Um, and I've seen oil sprayed up on the trailer and everything else. So we all know it's leaking down there and stuff. I just need to get the time. Here's my time. Uh, didn't come home for vacation. Came home to fix this. So we're going to knock this out and get Big Blue feeling better. So I hope everyone out there is having themselves a great day, a great night, 
when you're watching this here video. And if you are not, well, we can certainly try that again tomorrow. And if you still don't feel better, well, then you can come on up underneath here and crawl under this truck and help me pull this transmission out because they're kind of heavy. It's like multiple lifting here. <laughs> I'll catch you guys later. See ya.